Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is running into short-term resistance just after we experienced a bounce from this area of support. And while this is happening, the US government just crossed above their debt limit of 31.4 trillion US dollars, which I'll talk more about later in this video. So definitely stick around. First of all, starting off here on the daily Bitcoin chart, and right now as I've recorded this video, the Bitcoin price is still running into this golden pocket area of resistance, which is coming into play in between around 20.9k, going up towards around 21.2k approximately. And so once again, at least as of right now, we have not yet seen a confirmed breakout above this resistance because we have not yet seen a confirmed daily candle close above 21.2k. So at least for now, this is still the resistance that I'm paying attention to and obviously the resistance that Bitcoin is currently fighting. And of course, if you're looking at the daily Bitcoin RSI, this is still currently in overbought territories even after the recent pullback in this RSI, which means we still have more room to the downside in the RSI indicator before it gets back down towards more neutral levels, which is pointing towards perhaps a continued cool off from this bullish trend because technically Technically speaking, this trend on the daily time frame still remains a bullish trend because we're still seeing higher lows and higher highs forming right now in the Bitcoin price. It's just recently the Bitcoin price got too overheated. It got too far ahead of itself, pushing this daily Bitcoin RSI well into overbought territories. Once again, it telling us that we need to see a bit of a pause from this bullish trend. And now, as always, both sideways price action and bearish price action can help reset the RSI. So we could end up seeing either sideways or bearish price action or a mix of both to help reset this RSI to potentially give us some more room to the upside later on. But like I said, over the last few days, even if the Bitcoin price breaks through this golden pocket and continues on with this bullish trend, in that case, it would actually be fairly likely that we could form a bearish divergence on this daily time frame because considering how high up the daily Bitcoin RSI reached just recently, it would be fairly fairly easy to form a lower high in the daily Bitcoin RSI while forming a higher high in the price action. So that's just something potential to look out for over the next one to two weeks or so if we break through this golden pocket first, obviously. And as for other levels of support and resistance here on the daily time frame, first of all, above this golden pocket, we still have resistance at around 22.7K and around 25.2K. And as for support, if we see a further rejection from this golden pocket, then we should have support at around 19.7 to 19.8k, but we have more significant support right here at around 18.6 to 18.7k. And now if you zoom into the shorter term, looking at the four hour Bitcoin chart, we still have this short term bearish divergence playing out right now, which means we're due to see reduced bullish momentum, at least in the shorter term. But generally speaking, these divergences here on the four hour time frame play out over around one to two days before they begin to fade away. And so far, it's been roughly two days since this bearish divergence has been playing out. And so potentially soon, as in in the coming hours, maybe over the next day or so, we could end up seeing this bearish divergence begin to fade away and a possible return in some bullish momentum. But if you're looking for confirmation that this bearish divergence is over, we really need to see a breakout in the four hour Bitcoin RSI above this descending line of resistance resistance, which right now is sitting at around 59 in the RSI with the RSI itself sitting at around 55. And so once we eventually see a breakout in this four hour Bitcoin RSI, then we could begin to say that this short term bearish divergence is potentially over. And at that stage, we could continue on with the short term bullish trend, because like I said, we're technically still in this bullish trend. And now if you're looking at the two hour Bitcoin chart, just recently, the price of Bitcoin has run into this previous uptrend line of support, which is now acting as new resistance considering the price broke below it. And that's sitting at around 21.2K approximately. And so in the immediate short term, 21.2K is the resistance to watch, which is also where that golden pocket is sitting at once again. And as for support in the immediate short term, if you're looking at the volume profile indicator, we have support at roughly around 20.7K. But if you're looking 
looking at these lows and these lows, we also have support at around 20.5 to 20.6K. So basically in between 20.5K to 20.7K is a short term range of support that I'm currently watching. But if the price of Bitcoin confirms a break back below around 20.5K, then like I said in my last video, if that happens, then I would expect a drop down towards some of these other levels of supports that I mentioned here on the daily time frame. And now if you're looking at the Bitcoin funding rate today, we're actually starting to see more negative funding rates show up compared to what I said in my last video. Because first of all, if you watched my last video, there were quite a lot of neutral funding rates around 0.01%, which are still showing up at the moment for some coins on some exchanges. But there were also a decent amount of funding rates well above 0.01% and not many in the negative. So not many in the green if you watched my last video. But obviously today, there's a lot more of these numbers sitting in the green. So sitting in the negative territory, which basically means there's a lot of people trying to short Bitcoin and short some of these other coins right now on these specific exchanges where the funding rates are negative. Because if the funding rates are negative, that essentially means the price of these coins on the derivatives market have dropped below the spot price on the spot market. And basically the more negative funding rates we see across the board right here, the more likely a possible short squeeze could happen. And in case you don't know what a short squeeze is, it basically forces the price to the upside. So a short squeeze is bullish. And once again, the more negative funding rates we see, the more likely a short squeeze could potentially happen. But on the flip side, if we see a lot of these funding rates well above 0.01%, so if a lot of them are sitting in the red just here, like a few of them are at the moment, then in that case, that increases the possibility of a long squeeze happening, which is obviously the opposite of a short squeeze, which is basically bearish for the price of Bitcoin and any of these other coins if the funding rates are a lot higher than normal. So basically, as of right now, with a lot of these funding rates back into the negative, technically speaking, this is slightly more bullish at the moment compared to bearish overall for most of these coins. But anyway, now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this right here is the daily ETH to US dollar chart. And right now, the price of ETH is technically still in a bullish trend once again, because obviously we're still seeing higher lows and higher highs right now in the price of ETH. But once again, over the last few days, the daily Ethereum RSI has obviously been well into overbought territories, and it's currently still sitting in overbought territories, which basically means we're due to see a cool off because we've gotten too overheated in this bullish trend. So we've gone too far to the upside too quickly and we need some time to cool off basically a pause from the bullish trend whether that means sideways price action or a slight pullback either way both sideways price action and bearish price action once again helps reset the rsi from overbought territories back down towards more neutral levels which is what we need to see in order to potentially continue this bullish trend later on but like i also said earlier for bitcoin on the daily time frame and as i've mentioned over the last few days with the rsi reaching extremely overbought territories over the last few days. This also increases the risk of a possible bearish divergence forming on the daily time frame. Even if we do continue this bullish trend over the next one to two weeks or so, it would be quite easy for the daily RSI to form lower highs while the price action forms higher highs, which of course would result in a bearish divergence, even if this bullish trend continues. So that's just a possible risk to pay attention to moving forward. And as for resistance, we still have this range of resistance at around 1650 to 1.7k. But just in the imminent short term, of course, the price has been finding some resistance closer towards 1.6k, more specifically around 1610. And in fact, we can see short term support and resistance levels here in the volume profile indicator on the four hour time frame. For example, this range of resistance goes up towards around 1580 to 1590. So just underneath 1.6k on the four hour time frame. And so once again, that's acting as a bit of resistance at the moment for the price of ETH. And as for support, if we see a further rejection just here below this local low, then we have this area of support at around 1.4K to 14.10. But if the price of ETH breaks below 1.4K, then the next support that I'll be watching is sitting at around 13.20 to 13.40 approximately. And once again, like I said in my last two videos, there is a short-term bearish divergence
divergence playing out right now here on the four hour ETH chart, which once again means that we're due to see reduced bullish momentum, which is obviously exactly what we have been seeing since this bearish divergence confirmed around two days ago, approximately. And now once again, typically these bearish divergences here on the four hour time frame last for around one to two days or so before they begin to fade away. But in order to be more confident that this bearish divergence is actually over, we ideally need to wait to see a break above this downward sloping line of resistance in the four hour Ethereum RSI. And in fact, right now, as of recording this video, the four hour Ethereum RSI is running into this downward sloping line of resistance, and we have not yet confirmed a break back above this resistance, which basically means we should still remain somewhat cautious here in the shorter term while this bearish divergence is potentially still playing out. And then once we start to see a breakout in the RSI, that would be a bullish confirmation signal, basically telling us that this bearish divergence is potentially over. And obviously, as you can see here over the last one to two weeks or so throughout this bullish trend, we've seen multiple bearish divergences, which have usually lasted for around one to two days before the bullish trend continues on later. But in both of these previous bearish divergences, of course, we've eventually seen a breakout in the RSI above these downward sloping lines of resistance, which once again signals the end of the bearish divergence and the continuation of the bullish trend. But we are not there at that stage just yet. And now just quickly talking about the US national debt, which is essentially the amount of money the US federal government owes to investors. So people holding US treasuries and the US federal government does actually have a debt ceiling in place. So a maximum debt limit that they are not allowed to cross above. And that maximum debt limit, that debt ceiling is 31.4 trillion US dollars. And now they are above 31.4 trillion dollars in debt. And so basically there's two options. Either the US federal government defaults on their debt, which would be absolutely catastrophic for the United States and also for the US dollar, because if the US government defaults on their debt, then that would actually tank the value of the US dollar. The US dollar would absolutely crash relative to everything else. And that would perhaps be a good thing for Bitcoin against the US dollar, because if Bitcoin is valued against the US dollar and the US dollar crashes, Bitcoin simply needs to stay put and stay valued around the same relative to everything else. And if the US dollar crashes against everything else, then on the Bitcoin to US dollar chart, it would look like Bitcoin is gaining in value against the US dollar. But in reality, in that situation, it would be the US dollar, which is rapidly losing value if the US government defaulted on their debt. But the more realistic outcome of this would be increasing the debt limit or debt ceiling, which is not the first time that has happened. Because if you look at the US Department of Treasury website, you can see here that since 1960, Congress has acted 78 separate times to permanently raise, temporarily extend, or revise the definition of the debt limit. And so basically within the last 63 years, there's been 78 separate changes to the US debt limit in one way or another. And so essentially when the US federal government reaches their maximum debt limit, what ends up happening is the debt limit gets gets increased to a higher level until they hit that debt limit again. And then they raise the debt limit again. And that keeps on happening. And once again, that's happened basically 78 separate times in the last 63 years. And so considering the current debt limit for the US national debt is 31.4 trillion, which is already lower than what the debt is right now, it's likely that the US national debt ceiling will simply get raised yet another time to continue on the trend of history. And at this stage, there's only two possible ways to help pay down this debt. One possible way, which is probably not very realistic, is reducing spending. And another possible way to help reduce the amount of this debt in real terms is to simply devalue the US dollar. So to print more US dollars, because if that happens, then even though this debt might remain the same in US dollar terms, in real terms, in purchasing power terms, it could actually shrink in size if the value of the US dollar goes down. And so essentially, this debt could be paid back in the future at some point using dollars that are a lot less valuable than what they 
they're worth today if more dollars get printed. And this is exactly why Bitcoin is extremely valuable because it is completely separate from this system right here. And of course, when the US dollar money printer eventually turns back on again, because over the last one year, it's basically been off to help fight inflation. And so eventually when US dollars have to be printed again to help pay down this debt, that is where Bitcoin comes into play. And Bitcoin is essentially a hedge against money printing. It's not a hedge against consumer prices. So Bitcoin is not a hedge against the CPI inflation number because that number is determined by the rise in consumer prices, but it is a hedge against money printing. So if a bunch of US dollars are suddenly printed, then Bitcoin will likely go up against the US dollar like it did throughout 2020 and 2021 when a lot of US dollars were printed. And so at least in my opinion, seeing this happen right now is just a reminder as to why at least I should be holding some Bitcoin. Of course, that's not financial advice for you. You can do whatever you want with your own money. But personally, I see Bitcoin as a bit of insurance against this situation getting even worse. But anyway, if you want to know how to maximize your profits in crypto, no matter if prices are going to the upside, to the downside, or simply chopping around sideways, then make sure to check out these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is trending either up or down. And the video in the bottom left shows you how to make money in crypto if the price is chopping around sideways. But anyway, that's everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.